If you are just starting out in photography, it can be difficult to know which camera is best for you. In this comprehensive buying guide, we will discuss the best cameras for beginner photographers in 2022. We will go over the different features and specs of each camera so that you can make an informed decision when purchasing your first camera. I'll also leave the links to discussed cameras in the description, you can check them for more information and the latest prices. Starting our list with the Sony A6000. The Sony A6000 has been around for years and is still one of the best cameras that beginners can buy, proof that you don't always need to rush for the latest tech. Most cameras get discontinued after a few years as new models supplant them, but Sony has kept the A6000 in circulation since its release in 2014. And the best part is as the years have gone by, it's only got more affordable. The camera still has all the features a contemporary photographer is likely to need. Its a PSC sensor represents a significant upgrade over a smartphone and will provide noticeably improved image quality. The 24.3 megapixels of resolution is more than enough for most purposes, enough to crop in a little or to make decent prints of your images. The maximum burst speed of 11 FPS is also more than good enough for a fast action shooting. The autofocus system was impressive for 2014 and still does a good job today. Subsequent cameras have come out in the series like the A6300 and the A6500 and more, and this means that beginners who start on the A6000 have a well-laid-out upgrade path. Plus, there are loads of great lenses for E-mount. The only thing to mention is that for video users, the A6000 might not be the best choice. For one, it predates the real 4K boom, so video resolution tops out at full HD, fine for most purposes, but maybe not for forward-thinking video creators. For two, it lacks a 3.5mm mic jack, so you don't have an option for improving your audio. Otherwise, this is a fantastic camera for beginners, and often easy to find at a great price. At number two, it's Nikon D3500, the best all-round DSLR for beginners. The Nikon D3500 is a DSLR, meaning it has a mirror mechanism that allows it to field an optical viewfinder. This makes it physically larger than mirrorless cameras like the Sony A6000, but many photographers prefer the slightly chunkier, ergonomic form factor of the DSLR. They may not be the most fashionable cameras on the block, but there's still a place for them and will be for a long time. When reviewing the Nikon D3500, we appreciated this satisfying DSLR handling. There's no question that it's an enjoyable camera to use. One thing we'd say is that while the bundled kit lens does the job, you will probably want to make upgrading it a priority. Picking up a lens with a larger maximum aperture gives you much more flexibility when it comes to exposure and depth of field, expanding your shooting options. Especially optimized for beginners, the Nikon D3500 is packed with useful tutorials and guide modes to help new users understand the basics of exposure and settings. The D3000 series of cameras are some of the most popular cameras for students around, and this is a large part of the reason why. Of course, it also helps that you've got Nikon's F-mount, giving you access to a huge catalog of the fantastic lens. The D3500 has an APS-C sensor and 24.2 megapixels of resolution, basically identical to the A6000 and a good combination for most purposes. Also, while DSLRs may not be as fashionable as they once were, being in the Nikon S system still gives you a huge choice of fantastic cameras when it comes time to upgrade, all the way up to pro-level workhorses like the Nikon D850. At number 3 it's Fujifilm X-T32, a premium beginner's mirrorless camera that's rewarding to use. If you have a little more cash in the bank and want a premium beginner's camera, we'd strongly recommend taking a look at the Fujifilm X-T32. A relatively recent refresh of a popular camera, the X-T32 is a joy to use, with satisfying dial-based controls and a cool retro build, both of which harken back to the film SLR of the late 20th century. The X-T32 is a particularly good camera for those who don't want to spend a lot of time editing images in software like Photoshop or Lightroom. When we talk about the X-T30, we really appreciated how good its JPEGs were straight out of the camera, leaving us free to shoot and shoot at the moment. Also, if you want a real touch of retro charm, you can play around with Fujifilm's fantastic film simulations.
These are finely tuned shooting presets that specifically emulate the looks of classic film stocks like Velvia, Provia, and Ashia. We found it incredible just how addictive these were. The other half of the picture is the lenses and Fujifilm passes with flying colors here. The X-mount lens series may not be as abundantly populated as others, but the lenses themselves are some of the best around. Absolutely tack sharp, with wide apertures and tactile aperture rings, they're a great deal of fun to use. In use, we were really impressed with the handling and quality of the X-T32. There are some features it might have been nice to see, like in-body image stabilization or a full articulating rear screen, but we can appreciate that throwing in everything would likely have seen the camera's price tag spiral out of control. At number 4 it's Canon EOS 250D camera. Another DSLR at the entry level, the EOS 250D is not Canon's cheapest DSLR, but it's the cheapest one we think is worth buying. It's the first entry-level DSLR to come packing 4K video, so while it's a shade pricier than the Nikon D3500, you do get more for your money. When using the EPS 250D, one of the first things you'll likely notice is that the Dual Pixel CMOS autofocus system is excellent, snappy and accurate. We also appreciated the quality of the 18-55mm kit lens this camera will generally come bundled with. While it is a kit lens, it's a surprisingly decent one and makes for a solid optic to get used to the ins and outs of photography. Canon also took a leaf out of Nikon's book and made the EOS 250D extremely accessible for beginners. The guided user interface and creative assist modes help you slide your way into understanding how the camera works, and the quick menu continues to give you easy access to the most vital settings. Once you've got to grips with the EOS 250D, You've bought your way into one of the most venerable and popular camera systems around, and even if it has some drawbacks, a slightly basic autofocus system, for one. It's a superb beginner's camera, on the expensive side, but worth it. At number 5 it's Polaroid Now Plus. A retro-style instant camera, packed with cutting-edge connective features. The Polaroid Now Plus is the latest chapter in the ongoing success story that is the regeneration of Polaroid. These revitalized instant cameras combine the best of the old and new, producing instant film prints with all the lo-fi charm you remember from years gone by, while also offering smartphone connectivity to unlock loads of cutting-edge features. Polaroid has extensively reworked its app, and the result is a camera control experience that feels smooth and modern. It lets you play around with specialized shooting modes like double exposure, self-timer, light painting, and more, and introduces aperture priority mode for the more confident settings tweakers. The Now Plus uses a two-lens autofocus system and can be mounted to a tripod if that's something that interests you. When using the camera, we found that the prints naturally look great with just the right level of retro chic. They're not going to win awards for technical perfection. But that's never been the point of Polaroid. They simply use analog charm and provide significantly better image quality than Fujifilm's in Stax range. Though granted, this means that they're more expensive to buy. The only real downside of the Polaroid Now Plus is that you have to factor in the ongoing costs of the film. At number 6 it's Panasonic Lumix G100. One of the best beginner cameras for social media creatives. If you know you're likely to want to capture stills and video, but are perhaps a bit of a novice at both, the Panasonic Lumix G100 is the place to start. A super small camera weighing in at just 412 grams body only, the G100 nevertheless packs in loads of great features. It shoots sublime 4K 30p video and excellent 20 megapixel stills, and thanks to the micro four-thirds mount, there are absolutely loads of lenses to choose from. We especially appreciate the control layout, which scores major points for how approachable it is, you tap the big red button to start recording, for instance. The customizable FN buttons are a good way to encourage yourself to experiment with different settings, while the touchscreen is also flexible and user-friendly. Also, in a remarkable development, Panasonic has teamed up with Nokia to give the camera OZO Audio, a multi-mic system that makes the camera's onboard audio recording actually quite decent. This alone makes it a great starter camera for vlogging. At number 7 it's Sony ZV-E10. While Sony's A6000 cameras are pretty great for video, those whose interests lie more firmly in this field may want to look at the ZV series instead. 
The Sony ZV-E10 is the second camera in this series and is a superb little vlogging camera that can also shoot pretty good stills when it needs to. It's also really well-priced, more affordable than many rivals. When using the ZV-E10, you can feel right away that this is a camera designed for video first, not photography. There's no viewfinder and no mode dial on the rear for quickly shifting modes. Something is done more in stills than video. That's not to say it's useless for stills, a smartphone is not ergonomically designed for photography, and most of us manage just fine. But if you're focusing mostly on stills, best look elsewhere. The video, of course, is great. The 4K 30p footage looks crisp and punchy, and Sony's video autofocus is absolutely class-leading. The built-in microphone is also good enough to be usable, something of a rarity on cameras like this, and it comes with a handy clip-on, wind muffler that really does make a difference. The lack of stabilization is a shame. Maybe it would have made the camera too expensive, but it would have been welcome all the same. And with that, we come to the end of our review. But which is the best camera for beginners to pick? It depends on what you need. Do you want something small and portable or hardy and weatherproof? Are you likely to be shooting video, as well as stills? Do you see yourself buying more lenses, or would you prefer a single package that does it all? The answers to all these questions will affect which camera is best for you.